In the latest edition of the MonsterVerse franchise, Monarch Legacy of Monsters explores three generations of a family intricately connected to the covert and foreboding Monarch organization. This TV series brings in colossal creatures that have long dominated cinema screens. Since Gareth Edwards' 2014 Godzilla revival, the giant monsters have been a lucrative, if not always critically acclaimed, cinematic phenomenon. If the Marvel Cinematic Universe can have a diverse yet successful life lineup of shows like WandaVision, Jessica Jones, Loki, why should the MonsterVerse fall behind? The first two episodes of the series unfolds through a bifurcated timeline, weaving the narratives of three young characters in each temporal strand. One timeline is set in 2015, a year after Godzilla wreaked havoc in San Francisco, leaving the city in ruins and makeshift housing. Now the world grapples with the realization that colossal creatures are a tangible threat. Beyond its historical symbol tried to nuclear fears, capitalist depression, Cold War anxiety, and climate crisis, Godzilla now serves as a post-pandemic metaphor, embodying human violence and the yearning for a reality-altering upheaval. Now it is a widely acknowledged fact that human characters tend to be the least captivating aspect of the MonsterVerse films. Therefore, the decision to center an entire TV series around them can be viewed as a daring move for Apple TV Plus's this latest offering. Now, in this this list, we will focus on exploring all the monsters who have made an appearance within the series. Even if they are not shown to be the main characters, the world knows there would not be much meat to the show without their gritty presence dominating all major events. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. King Kong, the 2017 film Kong Skull Island, not only welcomed the iconic ape into the narrative, but also introduced the concept of the Hollow Earth, a subterranean ecosystem where titans thrived and attained colossal sizes, nourished by continual exposure to radiation. The initial moments of the Monarch TV series, set in the timeline, transported us back to Kong Skull Island in 1973, with turmoil-ridden glimpses of the South Pacific during the peak of the Vietnam War and widespread U.S. military engagement in Southeast Asia and the South Pacific. Commencing with a flashback, the episode features a pleasant and unexpected return of the most iconic and colossal ape in the world, King Kong. Given that the show has not yet reached its peak, we only see a fleeting glimpse of this gigantic ape after he decimates a fighter helicopter to the ground and kills a good chunk of the military in the process. The TV series also witnesses John Goodman reprise his role as Bill Randa, the monarch operative who led the expedition to Skull Island back in 1973 in the main Kong movie. While every arc in this series definitely feels interrelated, it is safe to say that we will not be witnessing another iconic Kong fight anytime soon, given the approaching dates of the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie, set to air in January 2024. The Giant Spider Monster in a notable flashback, the unexpected return of Bill Randa unfolds as he is witnessed recording a video for what we assume is his son. Facing the camera, Bill hastily apologizes for something he supposedly took and promised that he left behind a whole legacy which would prove its worth at the end. Before Randa could say anything more, the narrative takes a suspenseful turn as an insanely giant and gross-looking spider chases Bill Randa through the bamboo forest. Cornered at the edge of of a cliff overlooking the ocean, Randa makes a desperate decision to discard his bag filled with classified recordings into the water before his impending doom finally catches up with him. However, the unfolding drama takes an unexpected twist when a mantle claw emerges from the ground, roaring at the giant spider and triggering a fierce battle between the two colossal arthropod monsters. This definitely saved Bill for the time being, but his bag, which develops into one of the most crucial objects of the series drifts away. Now, this colossal spider was actually first seen debuting in the 2017 film Kong Skull Island.
Ireland and came to be known as the Mother Longlegs, who stands out as a colossal arachnid superspecies that was a recurrent presence in the Kong-focused Monsterverse content. So, seeing the giant spider make a return to Monarch Legacy of Monsters is anything but surprising. Functioning as carnivorous ambush predators, these massive creatures exhibit a remarkable ability to blend into the bamboo forests of Skull Island by remaining motionless. With an imposing height of approximately 20 feet, the mother long legs boasts elongated legs that mimic bamboo stalks, providing them with effective camouflage amidst the forest. Their upper bodies tower above the canopy, resembling skulls with distinct beige coloring and large red eyes. In addition to their eight legs, mother long legs feature two supplementary limbs near their heads, equipped with pincer-like claws. While the Kong movie was ridden with these menacing spiders, so far Monarch has showcased only one mother long legs. The Giant Crab-like Monster like we just discussed in Monarch Legacy of Monsters first episode, Bill Rander was running for his life while being chased by a 20 feet tall giant spider. While he was waiting for his impending doom, after being cornered at the edge of the cliff overlooking the ocean, a humongous crab-like monster camouflaged within the rocks of the cliff rose out of its dormancy along Skull Island's shoreline. This crab-like monster charged right at the giant spider, allowing Bill to escape a bloody death. As these monsters clashed in a brutal brawl, the mother long legs gained the upper hand, managing to impale the giant crab directly in the face with one of its limbs, which caused the crustacean monster to stagger backward in a panic, inadvertently dragging the mother long legs along with it into the ocean. First seen in the Godzilla vs. Kong movie, these creatures usually camouflage themselves with the ground and only awaken when disturbed. Within the Monsterverse, these powerful creatures are referred to as Mantle Claws, a name derived from their distinctive ability to burrow beneath the Earth's mantle and their crab-like claws. Physically, mantle claws present themselves as massive, multi-legged beings characterized by thick, spiked carapaces, small facial features, and elongated, pincer-like claws resembling fingers. Their carapaces, designed to mimic rocks, serve as a form of camouflage, while parts of their bodies lack armor, revealing dense muscle culture and a lengthy tail, it is noteworthy that despite their arachnid appearance, Mantle claws are classified as vertebrates and possess a skeletal system. As seen through its initial appearance in the franchise, Skull Island harbors a variation of the mantle claw, which, though similar in size, displays distinct morphological differences compared to its Hollow Earth counterparts. The Skull Island mantle claw exhibits a flatter, less spiked carapace and assumes a more crab-like posture, featuring two prominent appendages that combine crustacean-like pincers with finger-like claws. Notably, it possesses a small pair of manipulator limbs near its mouth, composed of two conical plates and surrounded by four chalicerae. Unlike its hollow earth counterpart, this variant lacks the long tail. Godzilla. Coming to the main star of the show, the entire series is set after the events of G-Day when the atomic reptile monster Godzilla wreaked havoc on San Francisco. Now, it should be noted that the majority of the 30-plus Godzilla films spanning the last 69 years share a common secret which involves the king of the monsters not occupying a significant amount of screen time. Even in classics like Godzilla vs. The Astro Monster, a 60s gem deemed one of the franchise's finest Godzilla's appearance is limited to a mere five minutes. Crafting a compelling Godzilla movie with minimal Godzilla involvement hinges on a robust plot and well-developed human characters, a principle that holds particularly true for television adaptations. Despite Apple's financial backing, constant monster mayhem on a TV budget is still unfeasible. Now, Monarch's premise immediately poses a challenge for the colossal creatures, unfolding across two timelines and half of the action predates Godzilla clash with the Mutos in San Francisco, concealing the existence of Titans, while the other half unfolds between the 2014 film and Godzilla King of the Monsters, a period seemingly devoid of major monster battles. The show leans towards a covert narrative of kaiju cover-ups, which is clearly evident through the two of the three monster scenes in the episode, which were flashbacks to cinematic events. People familiar with Kong Skull Island are well aware of Randa's fate, who falls 
falls victim to a skull crawler. However, his bag survives, discovered by a fishing trawler in the Sea of Japan in 2013 and ultimately reaches a concealed safe in a Tokyo office. Fast forward to 2015, a year after Godzilla's impact on San Francisco, when Kate embarks on a journey to Tokyo to settle her late father's affairs. Japan, in response to Godzilla's threats, has fortified itself with missile defense systems, evacuation routes, and anti-Titan measures. But Kate's arrival takes an unexpected turn when she discovers her father's secret family, another wife and a son, her half-brother Kentaro. This encounter is super awkward and the two families fail to clarify their chronology, leading Kate to leave. However, an alarm disrupts her escape, leaving Kentaro and his mother to guide her into a Godzilla-proof bunker. The unfolding events trigger a panic attack for Kate, revealing that she was on the Golden Gate Bridge during Godzilla's destructive rampage in 2014. This poignant scene was the first glimpse we have of the reptilian monster, whilst offering a closer look at Godzilla's impact, directly addressing criticisms of the 2014 film for its sparing use of the iconic monster. Despite Godzilla's role in halting Muto's and facing more formidable titans in subsequent movies, the portrayal underscores that he is far from a straightforward hero, leaving collateral damage in his wake, as clearly seen through Kate's PTSD episode when Godzilla propels a bus full of children from a towering height. That's my grandmother. Yeah. Bigfoot. Although this mythical kaiju does not necessarily make a screen presence in the Monarch TV series, they are a well-known name in the MonsterVerse. The hairy primordial creature does not necessarily appear within the forest. Within the show, Kentaro mentions him when they were desperately trying to look through the classified tapes found in his father's office. Kate and Kentaro reached out to the latter's ex-girlfriend who is an expert coder. Even after being on the outs with Kentaro, May rel reluctantly helps the siblings decrypt the files. While looking through them on her computer screen, Kentaro notices a black, hairy creature within the files and immediately recognizes it as Bigfoot. While we have not seen the monster's literal presence on screen, it can be assumed that Bigfoot might make a banger appearance in the upcoming episodes of the season. Monster Eggs Despite one fleeting glimpse of Godzilla, Monarch Legacy of Monsters surprisingly restrained its use of kaiju appearances. When Kate and Kentaro were struggling to find out more about their father, they stumbled upon a photograph featuring their grandmother standing within what appears to be the footprint of Godzilla. Next we know, the narrative transports us to 1959 in Kazakhstan, where a young scientist Kaiko embarks on a mission alongside her partner, a priest called Island young Billy Randa and army officer Lee Shaw. Seasoned in encounters with titans and mutos, this trio heads a dilapidated power plant that should exude dangerous radiation. However, upon reaching ground zero, the Geiger counter falls silent, a testament to the titans' influence as Lee amusingly remarks, believing that the A in A-bomb stands for appetizer. Amidst their research, the team stumbles upon a submerged chamber teeming with glowing red beach ball size eggs of a novel Muto variant. Against Lee's justifiable reservations, Kaiko and Billy descend to collect a sample. And of course, in classic monster lore fashion, the eggs hatch, unleashing a horde of ferocious, giant beetle-like insectoids that chase the duo relentlessly. Despite valiant efforts from Lee and Billy, Kaiko succumbs to a gruesome fate, swarmed by the bugs and plummeting to her demise, marking a disturbing conclusion to the episode. The Dragon-like Monster now, Season 2 of the series transports us back to 1952, unveiling the origins of the relationship between Lee Shaw, Billy Randa, and Kaiko. Lee, who was assigned to security detail as punishment for intervening in a bar altercation, meets Kaiko, a Japanese scientist investigating peculiar radioactive isotopes detected over a Philippine island. While on the island, they come across Billy, a cryptozoologist drawn to the island by native legends of a dragon, creating 
blazing a path of fire. The isotopes, unrelated to bomb fallout, intrigue both the scientists. Billy's investigation, rooted in local folklore, aligns with Keiko's scientific findings, much to Lee's chagrin. Irritated by their shared enthusiasm for their respective fields, Lee departs, leaving Billy and Keiko to delve into their discoveries. As they venture into the jungle, they chance upon an unexpected sight of an American battleship, the Lawton. Strangely positioned at least 5,000 miles away from its wartime location, Billy recognizes the ship as the one he survived in 1943 after it collided with an unidentified entity. This traumatic memory fuels Billy's belief that the incident involved a MUTO, aka a massive unidentified terrestrial organism. However, as Billy revisits the past, the MUTO resurfaces, depositing slime-covered corpses within the ship and tearing it apart. While Lee had almost gone his own way, he observed a celestial path in the sky, which alerted him to arrive just in time to assist Billy and Kaiko in their escape. As the trio takes cover, this colossal bat-like dragon literally broke out of the warship and roared in anger, as the three watched in disbelief. Marvelous Verdict Although the Godzilla series has very little Godzilla in it, we can still hope there is much more screen timing for the kaijus in the upcoming episodes of the series. Nonetheless, the plot so far has been quite riveting, and the occasional monster cameos seem to suffice in order to build up the story arc and keep it engaging. So, have you guys seen the Monarch Legacy of Monsters yet? What are your two cents on the show? Let us know in the comment box below.